Hello everyone and welcome to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.2.1. This isn't a perfect continuation of my colonization 1.1.3 series, so that's why I'm starting the number sequence anew, but it isn't a completely fresh start either. The things that I've carried over are our funds, our science, the state of the tech tree, and also our Kerbals. So our Kerbals have the correct amount of uh, experience and the actual Kerbals that we have listed here are the ones from the Colonization 1.1.3 series. So they've done all the things. And also our buildings. The status of our buildings, how upgraded they are, has continued on. Uh, unfortunately, the status of our contracts has not continued on, so we're starting again with Escape the Atmosphere. Well, let's, uh, let's get that. Okay, it looks like uh, the, there's a new contract situation where trivial contracts we can take a lot more than exceptional contracts. Apparently Orbit is exceptional. Let's pick that up. Um, okay, and launch our first vessel, yeah. Uh, gather scientific data from Kerbin. Um, sure, I guess. Um, that's an interesting one because my first payload isn't, isn't really for that. Well, I'll show you in a sec. The main thing is that we need funds because our, our very first mission is going to be rather expensive because I want to jump start this as quickly as possible. One thing that we've lost in the transition between 1.1.3 and 1.2 is our bases and our stations. And rather than uh, just go for a station, I'm going straight for building a base on the moon. Just uh, We're just going to knock that one off and uh, then we'll do a base on Minmus and then we'll build some stations and we'll be mainly be building things. But we have to watch our funds. But right now we have 3.1 million. Uh, this launch is pretty expensive. Uh, you can see it's going to take more than 10% of our budget. And I have not made the launcher reusable. Um, maybe I should reconsider that. I, I bet that if I pushed it to um, stage recovery, we'll be able to recover these boosters. Let's see. Um, okay. Uh, highlight. Uh, okay, that that's a booster, and that's a booster. All right, so nine and ten are our boosters. What is this? Uh, the launch clamp is going to go thirty-six meters per second. I'm not clear what that's about. Okay, so what we want to do is put some parachutes at least uh, to minimize the amount that we're going to lose from this. Of course, most of the cost is the payload. And much auto strutting is involved. That's the primary reason why I wanted to go to 1.2 is because of auto strutting. But the payload is 194,000, so there's not too much we can do about reducing the cost here. Let me close this up for now, and let's plot some parachutes onto this. This is not the best way to try and recover them, and certainly not what you would call call legit but let's just try and make it happen and then we'll work on real recovery as we go along okay well according to stage recovery the boosters are now 99.77 percent recoverable and i seem to be getting diminishing returns with each additional parachute so let's take a look uh, we still have plenty of thrust to weight ratio initially and plenty of delta v so that's all right so we'll try and recover the boosters. We'll see what happens. Um, who knows if we can even separate them off safely. But the at bottom of the boosters, we have five LVT-30s and four LVT-45s. So there are LVT-45s in the corners and LVT-30s in uh, as a cross, uh, including the center engine. And so that's how each of the bottoms are configured. I figured that that would be cheaper than actually using mainsail. I originally put mainsails at the bottom. But the main sales cost thirteen thousand. Um, there is a question of ISP efficiency, especially at sea level. Uh, the main sales are much better on the sea level ISP. But yeah, this is a lot cheaper because, well, I don't know. Uh, this uh, Reliant uh, one thousand five hundred. This is a little bit more expensive than this Reliant, which is one thousand one hundred. So maybe I miscalculated. But I'm using these and these. Um, for each core, we are using five of these, so 7,500, and four of these, which is 4,800. So that's uh, 12,300, which is still less than the cost of this, but they provide much more thrust. So 
that's that's my logic. Um, on on the mainsail configuration, I had to add SRBs as well, which is cute. I mean, which would have been interesting, but this is good. In here, we have a single poodle, and this is actually the second stage here, and that does not have much delta V. Uh, not about delta V. Thrust weight ratio. You can see the thrust weight ratio is 0.31. So we have to get this mostly to orbit before that one starts out. But then it has a lot of uh, delta V. It has a lot of delta V because. Yeah, uh, we are pushing it on the burn time, and we have a docking port here. So this this whole thing will come off um, eventually once the orange has deposited this one on the surface and it comes back and grabs this one. Then this portion will uh, get dumped off, and then we can use this second stage, reuse this for many purposes and so it has extra fuel for that. It's got more fuel than it needs to travel to the moon, get into orbit, and then let all these guys go and do their business. Uh, it's meant to refuel the orange a bit so that it can take care of the second payload. It's got some RCS for that. It can do the docking independently. So it's a reusable poodle stage that we've got there. So the only real disposable part of all this is actually this core now, now that we've added the parachutes to the to the boosters. Will it work? I don't know. I mean, in the previous version of KSP, uh, we would have had to put some fins on this. I wouldn't think that the gimbling of four LVT45s on each of these cores would be enough to hold on to it. But in my experience, 1.2 is a little bit kinder on that. But is it going to be kind enough? I don't know. We could also have put some Verners on the core stage or, or on this stage to help keep things stable. This is an expensive test. This is an expensive test any way you look at it. Okay, here we are. Um, we don't need extra planetary launch pads open. Uh, broadly speaking, we have the same mods as we did in the 1.1.3 series, except for Ben stock revamp. That's probably the most glaring omission right now. We've got um, Pork Jet's part revamp, but we don't have stock part revamp from Ben's. So we'll see about that. Uh, we do have, we are using USI life support, so we do need the supplies, and we have those. Uh, they're not in the habitation modules, but we can send a supply mission for that. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how the remote uh, resource transfer works. I, I haven't had too much practice with that, so we're going to look into that when the time comes. For now, uh, I didn't really introduce the payload very well because we'll see whether we actually get places before I. <laughs> I bother with that. Let's not get our hopes up just yet. Let's make sure that we get places. Uh, we could down the wind and airlock and such on Chatterer. All right. SAS on, throttle up, and well, off we go. Okay, so far so good. I'll let it go up for a little bit before I start tempting the aerodynam aerodynamic gods, etc. Of course we're doing fuel crossfeed from the outer boosters in. Okay, I, I went steeper than I might have wanted to. But uh, that's because no fins, so I'm being cautious. On the right side, the boosters will land closer to the KSC like this. Well, right now I'm not being very cautious. I'm not really on prograde. Seems alright with it, though. I don't have my mech jab displays up right now. Okay, boosters off. Whoa! Um, those separatrons didn't really do their separatron thing much, did they? Huh. I really didn't hear the separatrons fire. I wonder if I had those wrong somehow. Okay, well, I, I would like some orbit info at least. Very good. 
Now, do we dare separate the fairings? Uh, well, now's a good time to find out whether that's safe. <laughs> okay, and it is safe. Three part fairings, because uh, initially I was going for a Titan IV kind of configuration, because I've fallen for that particular rocket a bit. But, uh, well, the rest of the rocket didn't work out that way. We'll find out whether, well, we got world first milestones that'll help on our budget. Launch first vessel, yep. I mean, it's really easy mode with the head start we have on funds and the tech tree, but, you know, like, super easy mode. But we did all that before. It's actually a little bit harder to uh, start from scratch on the contracts, so be better to have more lucrative contracts right at the start than all this stuff. Especially considering the very expensive activities we're planning on doing. Okay, we'll have this stage deorbit. orbit. Uh, well, we'll go to 120 on the apolapsis just so we get more delta V from this stage. Okay, there we go. This will definitely be demolished. Separation. Okay, and ignition. Okay, let's go to Apoapsis and then the Poodle will finish things off. Um, we escaped the atmosphere. Yes. And more milestones. No big surprise there. Electric charge seems alright. We've got some panels that are always open in, additional, in addition to a lot of other solar panels on here. Uh, we do have communication... Oh, hmm. I didn't check whether I had got that difficulty done. Enable comm network. Um, require signal for control. Probably will give me headaches. Uh, but we'll enable extra ground stations to balance that out. Plasma blackout? Sure. Um... See, these weren't uh, in the previous saves, so I hadn't had these configured. Kerbals level up immediately. For colonization, that makes sense. Allow negative funds or science. Negative science? Hmm. Well, uh, but how about all these other things? Uh, I'll do that for now. You guys can make suggestions about what I should do about this. Um, yeah. That is what we've got so far. Okay, um, resume. Gotta extend the antennae I put on here, because, yeah, I, I put antennae. That wasn't uh, totally negligent. But I only uh, put Commutron 16s. I hope they have range. Probably not, huh? We should probably send a satellite over to the moon before we deliver this. I. Should we set up a comm network? I guess people like comm networks. I don't like comm networks, but people like comm networks. Usually the way mines work out is I send missions with, you know, necessary communications. Uh, they fail, so they end up stranded around something. And then they serve to facilitate communication for the next mission. <laughs> At least that's how it works out in Realism Overhaul. So, uh, yeah. You know, you have a thing where you're supposed to send something to get some science from space and then bring it back home and then it turns out that it can't get back home because it just had to use all of its fuel to get to orbit and but it has you know antennae on it so it ends up in orbit as a communication relay satellite okay here we go Or is trying to go to the moon, but failed. Those plenty of those in my realism overhaul playthrough. Then it's a high orbit communication relay satellite. Um, uh, okay, let's just just for safety's sake, I will send a satellite over before doing this. So let's do a satellite launch first. Um, let me get the solar panels on the on the orange at least out. 
we haven't unlocked RTGs. I should probably visit the tech tree just so people just joining can see where we are in that. Okay, I've, un I've uh, extended the solar panels. They're obviously not working right now. Let's go back to the space center and visit the tech tree. Well, I'm really, really thankful that the rocket didn't flip. Um, notifications. We, we got the orbital one. Orbit contract complete. Yep. Stage recovered. That's what I was looking for. Terminal velocity was higher than we expected. 7.05. And out of a $52,000 booster, or fun booster, pound it actually says, we got 47000 back. Not bad. Certainly well worth the parachutes. Yeah, lots of parachutes. 8,000 funds worth of parachutes there. And another booster, right? Second booster. We got that back as well. Okay. Interesting. Okay, research and development. This is what our tech tree looks like. So this is, this is where we are. And it doesn't look like we have any straight parts to unlock there. That's good. But yeah, we haven't gotten the Nerva or atomic rockets yet, Nerve, uh, or heavier rocketry, Prometheus fission reactor, geez, serious stuff. So that's in our future. I guess just for the heck of it, I'll clear this line and unlock this supersonic flight. I was probably saving up for something completely different. Un Unmanned tech, well that's going to be important. Seismic sensor pod, these are neat little probe parts. Uh, the Octo. Hmm. Oversized signal intelligence satellite. That's interesting. Field science. Basketball. Yes. Very critical. Malamute. I, I've seen the Malamute in action and I think I like the Malamute. So maybe as our one of our rover possibilities we should look into that. Heavy landing. Um, not necessary right now. We've got some lackluster labs parts now, and those are in here. We've got some Mark II, uh, sorry, Mark IV space plane parts too. There's a lot in this heavy aerodynamics thing. The whole Mark IV system is here. Wow. Tough choice between that and uh, rovers. I know people want to see space planes. So I'll get the heavy aerodynamics right now. And then our next target will be this field science, I think. I'm not sure I need really powerful engines, um, but the nuclear engines will be spiffy. Okay, let me develop a ComSat launch system. Alright, so I've got our satellite launched together. And basically what I've done is I took the core stage of the previous rocket and slapped parachutes all over it and made sure it was going to be reusable. So we've got 5.7 meters per second as the plan there. And instead of having a poodle stage, which was underpowered, I have this 6LV909 stage, terrier stage. And I'm using these terriers from the part overhaul pack, which have 340 vacuum ISP, but most importantly 75 kilonewtons. So they're powerful and that gives us a thrust weight ratio greater than one. Uh, now you might be, well, there's a lot of delta V here. Where the heck are we sending this to? Well actually this part will stay in orbit. It's got the same sort of uh, facilities as the previous one we saw. So it's got a dock port and it, it did have solar panels by the way. So the other one also has solar panels, batteries, controller and everything else. So it's got all of that and it'll be self-sufficient and ready to do other things. And so the fact that we have a lot of extra fuel is not going to be a problem. It's not going to be wasted. It'll be a tug later on. Okay, so, and that's because this is meant for heavier payloads than what we're carrying right now, and possibly interplanetary payloads. So that is good. So we have that going for us, and then we have all of the communication satellites. I've put six all together. That's why it's called hex probe pack. That's not because of the probe core. We're actually using octos. Um, but uh, yeah, we've got six probes all together. Two really large ones with these antennae. These are a two relay antennae. And then each of these has 
two of the high gain antennas. What we're going to do is, I, I think I'm going to plan to put one of these around Kerbin and one around the moon, and then uh, two each of these around Kerbin and the moon. Uh, just for the heck of it. I mean, it, there's no real plan here, uh, but they've all got plenty of fuel, and you know, this is recoverable, this is reusable, this stage here, and so we don't have to, I mean, I could launch it on something cheaper and smaller, but why? <laughs> but why? Uh, since we've already built this rocket, and uh, now I've upgraded it to LV-909s, this seems like a good idea. Okay, so obviously auto strutting is involved, and we will see how this goes. Save and launch. I promise we will do better recovery systems later on. This is just trying to get set up and get my feet wet in this version. So anyway, uh, here we go. Launch. Whoa. Um, I wasn't expecting that. And we seem to have lost a fairing. And our engines are falling off. Our second stage engines... I don't know what's happened with them. They all fell apart. Our second stage engines are falling off. Hmm... This may be a problem. Well, this launch is gonna cost a lot more than I thought it was going to. That seems like a bug that I should be able to revert on, but we'll we'll proceed. <laughs> uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll we'll see how this goes, but I might have to. I don't know. It's tough to say. I don't know what happened there. I don't know why our engines are falling off. They were attached to the stage. I mean. Very bizarre. Well, since the second stage is completely unusable now, I might as well pump this fuel down, huh? Hmm, I wonder if this stage will still be recoverable if it's really, really close to orbit. Don't know. Well, we really want to get our payload to orbit, we might as well continue. Uh, that was a mysterious bug right there. Well, we might as well coast a bit. I guess this is going to remain in orbit. It's a little bit dodgy. We've got two of those LV-909s left that looks like... Or, I, well, yeah, two of them. They're just sort of floating in there. But they're still in staging, somehow. Weird. Anyway, we can get rid of the fairing, I think. Assuming no other glitches happen. I'll leave the core stage suborbital. We'll have to see how that works out with the parachute. I doubt it's going to work out at all. Oh, shoot. I just throttled up and everything exploded. Okay. Right. Well... Um, this, uh, decouple, top note. Okay. Um, well, each of the satellites will have to get into orbit on its own. Uh, decouple? And uh, no, 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 too many parts, too many parts. All the parachutes. No, no. Yes! Throttle up and ignition. <laughs> Off we go! Oh darn, the del uh, thrust weight ratio is so low. It wasn't meant for this. So apparently, um, some issues with the way I stacked everything. Now, auto strutting happened. So, we did try. No, this this can't make orbit. It'll fall back down. 
which means probably the others won't either. Let me stage this one off, decouple. Um, let's decouple top node. Okay. Oh, good, it's going off to the side of it. That's very important, because otherwise I can't decouple these guys. These guys are lighter, so maybe they'll be able to make orbit compared to the heavier ones. Well, that's just typical. Hmm? Okay, uh, I appear to be controlling this thing. We've got communications, apparently. We've broken some antennae. Huh, that's not nice. But it won't let me click on, oh, that's broken. Is everything broke? Everything's broken. But the engine? Well, on the bright side, all the debris is suborbital. Okay, can we... I can't click on this engine at all. And can't stage. I can activate SAS, so I don't have a complete lack of control. The panels are broken, but I've never heard of engines being broken. Oh! Okay, activate. Oh, now I can activate. So I can't activate from staging. That was weird. Uh, this has well this doesn't have its antennae though those are broken now the solar panels are broken uh, Communitron 16 is still okay, but that's it Hmm Guys, I think I think it's fair to say there's there has been some glitch here Yeah, I mean this is a total wreck of a mission I don't want to start off on this note uh, with with having to redo it. Let's go back to the VAB and really hammer this out and see what went wrong. Yeah, I think I'm going to revert. I guess the logical thing is that these engines don't like to clip into each other. These are the part overhaul engines. Maybe we shouldn't have them clip into each other. Uh, how would it be if I just put four on? I mean. We don't need need a 1.0 thrust weight ratio. That's four. They're not clipping that much. 0 0.90 thrust weight ratio seems fine. I wonder. I mean, we lost that fairing initially, but that was probably because the engines were wigging out. Why does the fairing clip into that? Even though I don't have extra height on, let me replace this fairing because I'm worried about it. By the way, uh, we're still limited to three meters right now. I don't know what where. I mean, I thought we should be beyond that limitation by now, but we're still limited to three meters. So that's why the rockets have been three meters. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd make them bigger. Okay, let's see. Bearing. Okay, well that that doesn't seem to clip in. Hopefully, those things were were the bad things that went wrong. Okay, I, I just saw a shutter, and we have a panel falling off, and the engines are uh, are not connected. So, good thing we didn't launch just yet. It is apparently some bug, because I placed those properly. Unless they're not meant to be surface attached, then why are they surface attachable? Um, this is the only stage having this problem. Um, I, I replaced the inner stage. The inner stage is working on the other parts. There's another inner stage here, another one there. We've got a lot of inner stages, so so it's not like that part. It must be these LV-909s. Uh, you should probably avoid using this model, I think is the conclusion I have to come to. But at least we didn't launch, so we can recover. Alright, so just as a test, I'm replacing those part overhaul LV-909s with these, which have less thrust, and so we see a lower thrust weight ratio even with six of these, and we'll see how this works. Now, if this doesn't work properly, uh, then we have a different kind of problem than uh, just with those particular engines. Uh, we'll call this, I mean... Uh, hmm. I'm gonna say that this is a real launch, and if we lose this one, uh, it'll, it'll just have to be lost. We'll hold on the launch pad until we see whether things are stable or not. And, um, yep, I think that's fair.
because I have determined a cause and now we must uh, accept the consequences of our intended solution finally <laughs> okay there we go okay um there doesn't seem to be any issue here it must have been the hitboxes on those LV-909s from part overhauls but maybe I shouldn't speak too soon everything appears to be stable SAS on throttle is up and ignition I take it back <laughs> hmm. Huh. Well, I said that we would have to bite the bullet on this one, so we do. Um, what I'm gonna have to do is launch it high, I guess? Try to toss it up, and then give the, the satellites enough time to make orbit. Assuming everything doesn't randomly explode. I mean, we're losing this panel here. That one's tweaking out. The whole thing could disassemble at any moment. Because once all the panels are off, there's no structural part connecting the first stage to the second stage. Well, there goes that one. Well, if anybody knows anything about this bug, tell me. I've definitely clustered engines before. Okay, we should definitely be on a... Okay, not so high trajectory, actually. Um, this isn't going to work very well, is it? Right, SEP. Um, uh, oh. Maybe these three can work? So why are these three okay, but not the other three? Perplexing. Alright, separating fairings. Looks like the gimbling on these three can actually hold it, which is... Okay, sort of hold it. Um, how about some RCS to help? Oh, okay, I, I, I spoke too soon as usual. Um, can we, like, spin stabilize? Not with thrust going on one side, and of course SAS trying to hold it. Um, wish I had a more powerful probe cord than the one I've got. I should have moved. Uh, what the problem was, I didn't move the fuel to the bottom this time, so we lost some ability to make orbit. I'm missing the poodle now. I, I really would like the poodle. <laughs> Three LV 909s don't produce too much thrust to weight ratio on this. Hmm. So the first time around, I didn't use a thrust plate multi adapter. I connected those engines directly to the procedural part, the tank. This time, I used a a thrust plate uh, multi adapter because these engines don't have surface mount. Same result. Maybe it was the procedural fairings, but why? <laughs> why? Why did they do such a thing? And not, uh, I mean, the interstage fairings, of course. I guess the first stage might still be recoverable, so we'll look out for that message. Looks like I'm spin stabilizing it. Interesting. But only by continuous application of the RCS. And note I'm not using roll, that's because the engines are doing part of it, and the fact that I'm pitching down is doing part of it. Okay, let's start these off, uh, maybe on a 300 kilometer orbit. Okay, there we go. Just completely arbitrary. Alright, um, 
That's that, that's that. All right, set that. Right. Okay. And so we've got these two probes and then four in here. Uh, we will leave that... Well, uh... Hmm. Let's leave that be for a sec. Let me deorbit this part. Oh, it's got no elect... It's got no electric charge. Ah, uh, so no communication. So it's left up here. We'll have to clean it up some other time. I didn't realize the electric charge was all up there. And those panels. Okay. Alright. We're going to uh, decouple each of these. Okay. Check that. It can fire its... Okay, well, it can't fire its engine through normal staging. Um, can I select its engine? We've had this problem before. Doesn't seem to... Uh, well, that one I can... Oh, it's because we're controlling this one, huh? No, it just says aim camera. Oh, wait, I think I... Yeah, there we go. Only from a very definite angle. Okay, activate. Throttle forward. Good. Let's extend solar panels. First priority. Okay, back to the four remaining probes to make sure they actually have power. Well, let's check uh, solar panel retracted. It doesn't, doesn't say broken. That's clearing out. We can probably separate this one. Okay, and nope, it just says aim camera because we haven't. It's too much stuff. Uh, sorry about the dark. Let me see. Did I put anything to help out with that in here? Apparently not. Okay, I'll have to remember either Planet Shine or the equivalent. Okay, so that's in theory ready. What are the messages we've got? Um, that debris... Terminal velocity of 279.82 Well, that looks like our core right there that got destroyed. I guess it was uh, too hot. Terrier. Then there's this thing. That looks like the core, actually. I don't know what the other part was. Maybe that was just a leftover from the previous launch. Yeah, so we actually did recover this. This, this was the core for this launch. Very good, so that's cheaper. Okay, it's really all dark here. Can we wait until we're in daylight, maybe? I don't know how much charge those uh, the other three probes has have, though. Okay, let's uh, maybe tilt it a little bit so that it's not in the same direction as all the others. You can see they have quite a lot of Delta V each, so there's not going to be any problem getting them to the proper location or anything. Okay, so good news, we have six satellites. Oh, that was close. Um, six satellites, lots of debris, tons of debris. That's not always typical. Okay, so now I have to put them into their required locations. I hope I didn't, like, deorbit all of them, did I? They weren't all pointed retrograde, were they? No, it's not too bad. Okay. So, yeah. Let's go to one of the bigger ones and put it into, like, geostationary orbit. Or Kerbal stationary orbit. Well, here we are at Periapsis, and then I'm going to boost out. Oh, 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 oh. Ah, oh, crud. There's so much debris here, I collided with one of our things and we've lost two soul panels. I need to be more careful. We've managed a one launch Kessler syndrome here. Now these antennae, I don't know what they came from. These Commutron DTS R4s. But they're so long, 
it seems like they're trying to actually touch the location they're communicating with. I don't know. They're really long. I just had to use them. I mean, they're big. The amount of delta V on this thing is excessive. We've got 2,300 meters per second. <laughs> the thrust is not very good, but... Yeah, we could send one of these over to Jewel or something. <laughs> okay, we are approaching Kerbal Stationary Apoapsis, at least last time I checked. We'll go with that. The other satellites are just gonna hang out and keep charging, so that's good. Now, are we going to be over the KSC? If so, I mean we have communications, so it's all right. If we're over the KSC, we'll go to a full periapsis. Uh, let's focus on Kerbin. Um, this looks like the home continent, right? Yeah, it looks like we're a little bit ahead of the KSC, but not too bad. It probably doesn't matter too much. We'll just lift it to a high orbit because we've got all the other ground stations. Even if it drifts, we'll probably be alright. I don't want too much hassle on the communication front. Just uh, a little bit more difficulty, not like full remote tech. Yep. Uh, probably overdid it. Let me retro burn just a little bit. I'll call it a day and call it a day. Alright, let's continue with other satellites. I want the other large one, if I can get to it. Um, switch to, it says relay, so hopefully, well, they're all relays though. They all have relay antennae. But, and then we'll uh, transfer that over to the moon, and then we'll be ready to transfer our main payload to the moon. Yeah, it is not the right one, nor that, nor that. Or not. That, that wasn't the relay I was looking for. This isn't much of a relay. Call it a relay. I don't call this a relay. Um, this should definitely be... This doesn't even have a controller so I can redesignate it. Hold on. Debris should be off. Yeah, debris is off. It considers this a relay. But it has no controller on it. It should be considered... Trash. Debris. Okay, this is the one. This is the one I wanted. And we're going to try and transfer this over to the moon. We'll worry about the other satellites as we need to. They are there to do our bidding. Okay, uh, that's probably a low enough periapsis, well, too low. Let's go over there. I should have put some science on these, I know. But they're dedicated commsats. They're not supposed to be doing sciencey stuff, right? Okay, I see thrust. I mean, I see that we're... we're our orbit is changing, but we have no flame coming out of the ant engine. How could they have messed up the ant engine? I can't click on it half the time, and now we don't have any thrust animation? These octos here don't have many functions, do they? Just uh, stability assist, huh? Hibernation. I didn't set hibernation warp for the others. Gotta do that. I use the octos because it's easier to put stuff in symmetry on them because eight is easier. You know, like four batteries and then the antennae on one side and another side. Speaking of which, let's extend those and hope they don't bump into some debris. Okay, and actually that would have been fine. Let's go back a bit. There we go. Alright, periapsis. Okay, that's a little bit too low. Let's go for a higher periapsis, shall we? 
Let's say uh, 200 kilometers seems fine. Mm, maybe 240. It'll cost us a little bit more to get into orbit, but... There we go. Alright, we're on our way. Let's hope we continue communicating... All oh, uh, limited probe control, but that's because I had uh, the hibernation on, right? Hopefully. The signal strength doesn't say it's a bad or anything. Connecting to Harvester Massive now. Connecting through the KSC. But will it ever show us connecting through our relay? Hmm. Okay, not very precise to any degree, but let's take a look at our orbital info. Two hour orbital period, just about, so I guess we could lift it up and call it two hours. Okay, close enough for me. All right, so we have a communication satellite around the moon, just in case. Let's go ahead and transfer our main mission over finally and get it over to the moon. All right, well, I just turned to the mission and it looks like the moon is right there, so I haven't plotted any transfer, but I think we might as well go. Well, somehow uh, the first stage, inner stage, does not have any problems with the second stage poodle. Maybe we should just keep the poodle <laughs> instead of going to the six or four LV-909s. It's strange, I do have Planet Shine in here. It's in the folder. Um, let's see. Configure visual, uh, configure visible buttons. Um, it's not showing up here. I've got Planet, well, maybe it's just a Planet Shine configuration. Um, no, the plugin is in there. There's a Planet Shine plugin, but it's not actually showing up in the game. So maybe I'll have to look for an updated version of that or something. I did find it weird that I would have forgotten Planet Shine since it's sort of part of the whole visual mod thing and I've got all the other visual mods. You know, stock visual enhancements, etc. I'll toss in ambient light adjustment just in case too. I don't think there's any harm in having both. Maybe. Okay, there's a moon periapsis. Not bad. Let's proceed to the moon. So next time I make a video, I'll definitely have some sort of way of improving the lighting situation. Ah, uh, I, uh, well, I mean, hmm, I forgot. We haven't really scanned the moon, have we? Yeah, that's something else we need to send, something to scan the moon. Of course, in the previous series, I had already scanned the moon for resources, but the resources will be different this time, so we need to send a scanner out here. So we can't really do the landing just yet. That's all right, I think this episode has probably gone on for quite a while. So next time, we'll send a resource scanner over to the moon, find a place to land this that will have the resources we want, and then we will profit. So we've had some hiccups, but it seems to be a particular thing and not something systematic to the install, which is good. I mean, if it's just one part or some particular interaction that's very discreet, I guess I can handle that. Some of you might have been wondering if maybe uh, some sort of lack of launch clamps or something like that might have caused wiggling that jostled those fairings free, but we had the same number of launch clamps on the larger launch, the one that launched this, as we did on the smaller probe launch, and so I don't see how that would be. We're deliberately keeping it inclined so that we have a choice of different landing locations. We have good communication through our relay satellite. In addition to the mods I already have, there used to be 
texture packs for the Kerbal system. I was thinking of trying colonization in the Galileo plant pack, but really the only thing the Kerbin system is lacking is better textures. And I think this is all much more familiar to people and easier to grasp than the new Galileo plants, which would, you know, you don't really know how to deal with. Though that's a separate challenge. I think I'll do that not as a colonization series thing, but as a separate thing if I choose to use a planet pack. But I've never really successfully colonized the Kerbal system to my own satisfaction, so it's not like this is uh, old effort and I'm retreading ground. I, I've never done it. <laughs> I've never succeeded, so I'm going to, I really need to succeed before I go on to another planet pack with the colonization parts. Okay, we're in roughly a 100 by 100 orbit, uh, relaying through our hex pro pack launch relay and I think I'll leave it here for today so we know what we're doing in the next episode and I'll see you then thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this episode if you did enjoy this episode please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time